Mr. Gent Imraj. Uh, he's an administrator and project coordinator at Venus Alps Alliance, and also a lab specialist and project assistant. His areas of interest and expertise is medical imaging, biotechnology, smart communities, robust societies, environmental issues, and digital innovation. He will share with us his experience in small and medium scale research on sustainable ecosystem by talking to us about smart villages and new spatial technology in the mountains. So we are looking forward to hear from you on the issues that you experience on any challenges that you face or found in your research area. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you very much, Ms. Amani, for the presentation and for the introduction. Greetings all, all participants, all professors, colleagues in terms of nature lovers and also mountain lovers. I wrote a message before in the chat that in order if you want to follow my lecture so as to be our lecture in, so in, in a cooperation among us, I would kindly ask or I would kindly invite you so as you can go to this link www.menti.com and use the code on the screen 87281316. And then you can react with either a like, a dislike, or a question if you have along the lecture. Meanwhile, I'm just going to wait. Maybe some of you can go within. So I see that there is a first reaction, a question mark. So that's a good thing because it, it means that some of you was able to get inside. So for the ones that are inside, you can just please react with something. Another like. <laughs> That's very good. So as I can know that you are within and then we can continue with it, with this lecture. My name is Genti Mere, as Ms. Anami presented me, and our topic for today is going to be smart villages and use special technology in the mountains. Magnificent for the lights that we are receiving. You can join whenever you want along the lecture. Now, first thing, or as a first slide, let me remove this part, if I may. Great, so it doesn't interfere with your screen. It is an opening called Global Model of Rural Development Smart Villages. Now, with definition from the EU, the definition of rural or the definition of the smart villages, it says that they are communities in the rural areas that they use innovative solutions so as to improve their resilience in the sense of building on local strengths and on the opportunities that they are given to. Now, when we talk about strength and opportunities, we can go further on into a more deep analysis and just try to understand the concept of how these people, how these people living in these areas, they, they think about. So what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses, their opportunities, and also the threats that they have? In a simple analysis performance, and I'm going to do it by myself, and then I expect input from your side, a strength that comes to my mind for these people, it is that they have a natural intuition of facing and or adapting to a specific habitat or an, or an environment, I might say. This is a strength that, which means that many people living in the mountainous regions, although there, there are difficulties within, they have been able to adapt, to find solutions, to find ways how they can overcome some obstacles, and then to, to become leaders of that place, that we might say it in, a word, in some words. Some weaknesses, as we mentioned it along the sentence of the strengths, it is that the infrastructure of the mountains might sometimes or often, it has huge problems or, or, or it is like a fence for many adventures or for many breakthroughs that we would like to achieve. Many communities, they are geo-isolated. So it means they are found in, the, in some territories where either the routes to there, the streets to there, or even the network, the Wi-Fi, the signal, they do not arrive at these communities. So this is a weakness of these territories that we need to tackle it somehow. An opportunity, an opportunity, I would say that it is us, it is this summer field school, it is all this attention, all, the, all this promotion, all these initiatives that are being, or these donors, these investors that have the spirit and the good faith so as to invest in these people, to invest in these areas and to give them a, a spirit of freedom. There are many startups, there are many, there are many I, I know in my country for at least, 
There are many support that is being given by different donors so as to support so as to give some kind of help to these local communities so they can move forward. They can be the pushing up, the pushing people or the pushing forward process. The threats or the threats that I would like to mention, it is the threat of migration. We know that the mountains regions, they are, they have been, they are, and they will be rich in flora, in fauna, in the ecosystem they have but a threat it is that they will not always be rich with people people they struggle for survival sometimes so they need in a sense they need either to act in time we need to have them some support to act in time while they are still there or will be left with an abandoned territory and that's a threat that we we are facing for the mountains for the moment now i would like from you for the people that are online now i'm gonna wait 40 seconds, so as you can write in some small boxes that you have on the screen, if you have entered this link and then you use this code, you can write some keywords that can be either strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, or threats. I would just like to know from your perspective, what do you think about or what do you judge as, as SWOT for the mountains, mountains region? When you have written the words, you can click a submit button. I believe it is written on the screen or, or either in your tablet or, or in your computer, and then you can send it. Just gonna wait a little so someone can contribute if you want and if you like. Unexploited lands, <laughs> brilliant, magnificent. I believe this one can be categorized as a weakness that, we, that the, some areas are, are, are facing. So they, it might have been from the reason that there are lack of people, lack of people who can work this land or the land is in a sense difficult to be worked upon. So this is a weakness. Very well. Thank you for contributing for whoever it was. Just last 10 seconds we can have at this, at this slide and then we move forward. So at any time, if, if someone of you just is there and you want to, to follow it, you can just enter the link whenever you want and use the code. Good, I'm gonna leave this as a keyword for awareness in, in the screen, which is beautifully being, being uh, balanced by the, by the strength, I believe, it, which is written as beautiful resources. <laughs> Those are very beautiful inputs and insights from your side. Thank you very much. Now, after getting some, some input of what the analysis, so we know what's happening around, what we need to do is that gather these inputs and let's design something. Let's design, let's design some, some support for this rural youth in general. So this is the generation that is going either to stay or to leave. So they will make the difference in a sense. And we need to be very aware of how their processing is going or how their movement is, is that how is the trend of the movement? Well, as a first support, it would be that we need to clearly identify the needs that these rural youth communities have, and this can be classified as a social criteria, as a first point. The second point, it can be that we review the existing politics, because as we see, they are not so much functional, so we need to have something which is more, more interactive, more, more that can support these youth, or they can insert some inspirational features so as to make these youth stand, take the, take, for example, take the sense of, of the entrepreneurship and then let's contribute. A third thing, it would be that draft an aimed package that will allow the rural youth to get products into a digitalized market. We know that the only way to survive is that we have something to give and so we take something back, contributing and being contributed to. Having a design or having some, some keywords for the design, the next step it would be to insert a logic intervention. So we see that from the design and from the problems that we previously mentioned, we can start as a logic intervention that the first thing that it will be needed to be done, it is digitalization. So at least these geo-isolated communities, they should be online. They have the right, they have all the chances and also it would be it is somehow 
a pity the neglect the neglect that the countries leave for these places that in today's world that we have all these modern technologies we have still areas without signal just to call somebody to call our family members to call to call anyone that we may need help or we may need just for for social interaction so an internet infrastructure covering all rural areas a second thing it would be area covering so we have services that they stretch along all the region so all these wherever there are people there should be services being offered by the community itself by the government and also by by interested actors that that live in the area and then they they give give to the area a third thing a third logic intervention it would be to integrate young people so they need to be it has been i guess it is a spirit which is being inspired in in throughout the years for for some years i i remember as I, as i know for example the european rural parliament in 2019 it organized for the second time the european rural youth parliament so it has been eight years since the youth has been able to reach such high levels which are which are in this case there are european levels so support local rural entrepreneurs and give them a give them a hand so as they can stand as ambassadors of those areas for a longer time. Now, some tools, as we are mentioning beforehand, that we need some kind of logic intervention. Let us discuss maybe some methodology that we, that we as a network of NGOs, we have been able to at least research on it in our community. So the tools are overview of some geomatic technologies. Meanwhile, I see that there are some likes and some 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 reactions coming from your side, and I thank you. That's that's a good thing, so I can know your interest. So, in simple words, what we what do we mean with geomatic technologies? Well, with geomatic technologies, there's in simple words, we have lines interconnecting different places or different different regions. Then we have points which are nodes, nodes, uh, we might call that they keep note of the intersection of all these lines. And then we have polygons. So what are found in these regions? For example, here we have a house, here we might have a hospital, here it is a farm, here it is a school. All of these, they are represented by different polygons. So that's in simple words how, how we can think about geomatics. Now, Came up to the methodology. Now, what we say at the beginning, I should have written this in the beginning, but it, for special reason, I left it here. We create a hypothesis. So we can't create directly a theorem or a theory. We can say that this thing is correct. But firstly, we threw up in the stage a hypothesis, which is geospatial infrastructure. All the houses in the rural areas are to be well connected through rural roads insured by GIS analysis. So this means that all the houses that are in a community, you would know with exact precision where they are, what do they have, what kind of buildings do they have, how many people live there, what, are the, what is their social status, what is their economic status. So they are interconnected very well in a good database, which can be used by the government, it can be used by different NGOs that want to make a project in the area. So it can be used by different people. So having a hypothesis, the next thing is we have a research question or we have a question about it. And the question would be for all of your, how can I say, most of you, I believe they live in rural areas or they work with people that live in the rural areas. So let me ask this question to you and you can answer it from, from the screen if you are online on the Mentimeter. Is smart villages adaptable in your community through the mechanism of geospatial technology? I see that two reactions, they are going for waiting to see more. So do we have any, yes, I believe, or no, I don't think so. Yes, someone believes. Well, hooray. That would be a big, a big applause for you. I'm glad for that. Some other community people, they think that smart villages might be still 
a dream to be achieved, though. Very well. All right, I, I'm, li I'm liking that we have some coin distribution in, in the screen. And then there are some people waiting to see more in the, in the slides. I'm going to pause to the other slide. Just let me pop. All right. Now, when we have a main hypothesis, is, although we directly want to follow an impact, it will be impossible to neglect the other indirect impacts being given to the communities. So this part of a, of a main hypothesis or a main theory we want to achieve, we have some overall hypothesis where we can contribute if we do the main intervention, which would be smart agriculture. So if we, for example, if we achieve to have signal, to have infrastructure, technological infrastructure in some kind of rural area in a community, then we can use this structure to implement some additional sensors and then achieve a smart agriculture or intelligent farming. And the second one, it would be disaster management. More information that we get from the area, more inputs that we can gather, more data we have processing them, it would be, it is in many cases, a, a very important, how, I, how may I say this one? It's a very important, let's say, protection along what we do not know. So knowing too much, it helps us to overcome or to be able to face something that we do not know at all. Now, a state of art or what we want to achieve at the end? Well, we want to weave or we want to connect the social and the scientific backgrounds so as to create these engineering plans in these, in these areas. So how can we impact the communities so as to reach their digitalization required in this era of living. This is of the limits, just for you, for the ones that are curious. Some a month ago, we premiered a video about Albania, the North. You can just write it on, on YouTube if you want. Then you can see some, if you, and you are welcome to come, to come in Albania anytime you want and contact me. Good, in details, the study area about our research that we have done. The Albanian Alps, or block, consists of seven different valleys, which, have, which, are named in different, which are named differently, and they lie between some latitudes and longitudes in terms of how we can say, in terms of geomatic technologies or geomatic database. Now, what is GIS, Geographic Information System? What does it mean? As we previously mentioned, the hypothesis is that we register with GPS all the trails that connect huts with the houses, with the farm, and also with the, with the nearest village. So we go from the village below, the, the house there, we go up to the hut, which is found in between the, the valley and also the peak of the mountain, and then we pass to the other village. So we make these kind of, with these kind of interconnections. After we have registered, for example, with, trade, all the G, with GPS, all the trays, we have some data generated, then we can create some plans with them. They can be stored in different programs in different softwares like QuantumGIS or ArcGIS. And then through this database, after we process the data, we can analyze them and interpret them at the end. And that's the helping point or there, there is the breakthrough that we can achieve. How can we interpret what we have for a, for a possible future for, for a possible forecast. Now, a reinforced concept, we call this one. So there is one characteristic, a nice one in, in the Northern Albania or in the Albania valleys that are found in the Alps, that most of them, they are stretched as this one, they are vertically stretched or horizontally stretched, but it, the importance is that they are straight, straight along like this. So we have thought about creating two disaster management hubs or cells, as we call them, that will be located one at the end of the valley and the other one at the top of it. And through UAVs, which are unmanned area vehicles, which means you can think about them as drones, you know drones, I believe. And with drones, we have from a center, for example, from this center here, which is the disaster management cells, we send the drones to the other side and the way how they scan the territory for possible disaster management, like forest fires, or if it is a landslide or if there is, or there is some floods, 
the way how we operated with that, we have developed some algorithms that can help us to, to forecast what might be some disaster management and how can we interfere with it or to counter react towards any problem that the, that the valley may have through grid computing, which is detailed since I'm an electronic engineer, there are some keywords even related to my field. Now there is a question and I have four players up and up. I'm just gonna wait if there are many players to come more. <laughs> right, five of them, nice. I'm gonna click enter and then I'm just, there will be a question shown on the screen. And when we have that question, there are going to be three opportunities. I would like from you to choose one of them as your answer for, for it. Answer fast to get more points. It's right, it's, uh, all right, let us see. So what are the results along the roadmap of geospatial technology for smart villages? So when we go through this road, what would we achieve? 14 seconds time, is it interaction of geo-isolated communities, use of resources, or better disaster monitoring? Five seconds to vote, four, three, two, one, time's up. And I see that three of you have, have voted for better disaster monitoring and management. One of you has voted for use of resources based on terrain characteristics, which is important. And one of you is interconnection of geo-isolated communities. Well, there is no wrong answer because the three of them, they need to live, they need to co-live with the environment that we have so as to, to reach the results. So all of you are correct. Thank you for voting and taking your time. I appreciate that you, in a sense, what I appreciate too much is that when I see these results or when we all look at these results, we can see that different people, different areas, different needs. That's what we should aim. So encompassing all the people or encompassing all the mountains in a common plan, it is impossible because if each mountain, each mountain community has its own portrait. And we need to know how can we put this portrait in equilibrium with all the others, so as to create these engineering plans for the whole region. So I'm really glad that we have a distribution in all the questions like this, which means that everyone is, has an awareness that when we live somewhere, we need to adapt to the things that there are there. And the details can't be written, can't be read on a book or can't be read somewhere else because it is unique. Everything is unique. Most of the, all the people are unique and all the lands are unique. Now, there is a quote, an expression, which starts with, dear young farmer, a letter from a farmer who has been there before. So I would leave this one for you to reflect, to think of it, to, to see how you would write the letter for the next people, for the next generations that we have, what would you add to these letters? For me, it has been my parents, it has been my grandparents, it has been my family, that they wrote this letter to me. I was attentive of reading this letter. It, although it wasn't written in, in clear words, time to time I would have listened to these sentences and then I created a letter at the end for me, how, how, what is my role and how can I give for the region that I want to contribute to. I thank you very much, all of you, for the attention that you have. I'm open for any questions, either now or in the, few, in the Google group. So thank you very much. I'm going to stop screen sharing and miss Amani. Hi. Hello uh, again. Uh, thank you Jen, for a very interesting and well, ambitious uh, presentation. I personally uh, interested in the smart villages and smart agriculture. So I might add to my letter to next young farmers, be nature smart. And of course, uh, digitalization and agri tech will be on the heart of that letter. Uh, I will leave, uh, if anybody has a comment or uh, want to ask a question, please do. We have a few minutes. Uh, so please.
Go ahead uh, if you 